So you had a uh, very very interesting topic to talk on transcatheter aortic wall replacement expanding yes. indication. So what have been the usual routine indications in which we have been using this procedure sir? Right. So transcatheter aortic valve replacement represents a non-surgical methodology to replace the aortic valve. Right. And in times immemorial the only way to change a valve has been open heart surgery. Correct. Put a patient on a cardiopulmonary bypass open the chest, open the heart and then replace the valve manually and stitch it in. The transcatheotic valve replacement is a catheter based technique done in the cath lab almost like an angioplasty and in fact it's interesting that the first in human study started uh, uh, in 2004, we were the first ones to actually do this study in 2004 and then we were the first ones in <coughs> India to actually start uh, uh, the transcatheotic valve replacement on a compassionate use. Uh, through through uh, permissions from the Drug Control of India in 2012 mm -hmm. and from there on uh, the device got approved in 2016 October and now uh, more and more patients are receiving the benefits of this therapy. So actually how do we decide about whether we do surgery or transcatheotic valve yes. replacement? So actually the, the whole stuff, uh, uh, firstly of course this is a disease of the elderly. Aortic Correct. valve disease is usually a disease of the elderly. elderly and anywhere from 70 years of age to 90 years of age the valve can actually narrow up and therefore if it narrows up it puts a lot of strain on the heart and by the time people start feeling breathless and can have unconsciousness even heart attacks or sudden cardiac arrest and by the time they get symptoms the average survival is only two years. Sure. So it's a, it's a life threatening disease process which happens anywhere from age of 70 onwards. And most, mostly these patients are high risk for surgery because of their age, because of the other comorbid conditions, the kidneys may not be so good, the lungs may not be so good, so they are high risk for surgery and some of them may be even inoperable, they can't have surgery sure. at the age of 85. And this technique, because it's an angioplasty like methodology, is performed through the groin, through the femoral arteries, is performed in the cath lab, can even in the most high risk individuals can actually be performed with 1 to 2 percent risk with more than a 98 percent success with a rapid return to activity within two or three days and people going home. So it's a revolution in, its, in, its, in the way it's, it's uh, done and also that we are now able to do it on 65 year olds and 60 year olds and many people who had previous bypass surgeries are opting for this, this form of therapy. So it is a boon for a lot of people. So when we talk about the expanding indications. True. Obviously, people who can't have surgical aortic valve replacement, people who are high risk for surgical aortic valve replacement, people who are even uh, are obviously candidates for this because sure. it can done be at a lower risk. But what about people who are at lower risk for surgical valve replacement? Well, even those it has been now shown that transcat aortic valve replacement can be better than a surgical uh, aortic valve replacement in even those with intermediate risk, those who can have it. Correct. Surgically, it, this could be even better than the surgically. So, so, so surgically, uh, uh, surgical aortic valve replacement. And the rehabilitation will be much, much quicker in cases of transcatheter, I believe, as compared to the surgical. You're, you're absolutely right because it is the the patient is eating normally that very evening, True. is walking around the next day. True. As an elderly, it's very important to have them walking around earlier so they've got no no bed immobilization. True. And they're practically ready for discharge often on the second day along with other angioplasty patients. And when you look at these patients who are 80, 85 year old, even up to 90 year old, it's heartening to see that through a simple procedure, right. they're standing the next day and walking around and in fact are even saying that have you really done anything <laughs> because I feel so well. True. And because the aortic valve is immediately replaced and starts functioning well, patients feel well the very next day compared to what they were before surgery. So yes, it is remarkable in terms of, uh, of uh, the least morbidity it offers to the patient. In fact, it's already been shown that in the first year, the quality of life given by transcat aortic valve replacement is far better than surgery, uh, primarily because there's no immobilization and patients back to normal within 48 hours. So how many centers in India will be doing this procedure correctly? So, so, so while we were the first to start off, and we've trained a number of people. Right. At the moment, there are 27 centers doing it. Mm -hmm. But it's not that the 27 centers are doing large volumes. And I'd say 
most of these centers lie between anywhere, experience of anywhere between one and 10 cases. There are only a handful of centers which are experts and experienced at this technique. But probably this is a revolution, I believe, in terms of aortic wall disease management, especially the surgical management. And many lives can be saved and the quality of life will definitely be improved with such a procedure. You're absolutely right. There are at least 250 lakh people who require this uh, procedure. Uh, and uh, and uh, better, and the challenges are there for everybody to have it. But I, I tell you, better, better information to the patients, better information to the doctors, uh, is one of the one of the most valuable aspects True. of making this therapy available uh, to the public. And the other aspect is, of course, is that we are in the process of even developing indigenous indigenous catheter-based valve. And this is under trials at the moment. I am privileged to be the principal investigator of the study. Right. And uh, we, what we're showing is that the Indian valve could be as good as the ones made in the West. Oh, really? And once we prove that, you can imagine that the cost of therapy can come down remarkably. True. And that, that is truly a Make in India initiative that we, we should be very proud of. Oh, wonderful. So can in future, do you see that it could also be used for other valvular lesions like a mitral valve or some other valve? You're so right. I mean, this is, this is a phenomenal question because this, this transcatheotic valve therapy revolutionized our thought process to say valves can be replaced without surgery. We always thought it had to be open heart sure. surgery and a valve had to be stitched in. When you actually start innovating new types of valve which can go through catheter just like angioplasty, then you th start thinking of why just aortic valve. Yes, mitral valve is actually being started being replaced now with special, there are at least 30 companies working at different devices to replace mitral valve. And, and trials have already started across the world and hopefully that we would be starting one of those trials very soon to start replacing mitral valves with this tricuspid. So we're looking at a whole new therapy, era of a therapy, which was transformed not just coronary artery disease treatment, just like angioplasty and stenting transform coronary artery disease therapy. True. We're looking at a whole revolution over the next 10 to 15 years, transforming every valve therapy through non-surgical percutaneous routes in cath lab procedures, leading to discharge in 48 hours. I think that's quite wonderful kind of a job, sir. Really congratulations to you. And a lot of patients are going to get benefit with this kind of a, I'll say, minimal invasive procedures instead of going for open heart surgery. You're for absolutely this. right. And, and we don't see it as a, by the way, we don't see it as a competition between cardiac surgeons and interventional cardiologists. In fact, these therapies are developing in this manner only because the surgeons and the interventional cardiologists and the imaging specialists all have, and the anesthetists all have combined together to say, let's deliver the best with the least invasion to our patients True. and show that he can actually do better than the, the, than the therapies which have been there for a long period of time which are very invasive. True. So, so it's a heart team concept. No more a surgeon's concept and no more an interventional True. cardiologist's True. concept. We, to, we together think through every patient, we together discuss every patient and we together do every patient. So it's actually a heart team. It's a whole team-based approach. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for joining us today and sharing the wonderful work you are doing. Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And sir. it's wonderful to be on this TV.